Welcome back to Fox Hill's Black Report, your daily source for black news, views, and opinions. A federal judge reduced the prison sentence of one of the legendary drug lords police deemed responsible for the historic 1980s crack cocaine wars that took over D.C. neighborhoods. Rafael Edmond III, who was 55, was slated to die in prison, but a judge changed his sentence from life without parole to 20 years with a sentence reduction hearing conducted in the U.S. District Court in 2019. Edmund told the court that he wanted to get out of prison and become a pastor. I would love to be able to go into the community and help law enforcement and help kids change their lives, Edmund testified in 2019. Judge Emmett Sullivan predicted the unique circumstances of the case would make it the most challenging decision of my judicial career. Edmund was known as one of the biggest drug lords in D.C. back in the 1980s. He ran a huge crack cocaine ring and was making about $2 million a week. He was convicted in 1989, which means he's already served his 20 years and then some, but it's still unclear if he'll be able to be released soon as he still is facing a separate 30-year sentence for dealing drugs out of a Pennsylvania federal prison. Yeah. Well, speaking of kingpins and the criminal justice system, tonight FX's critically acclaimed series Snowfall returns. And joining us now to discuss the show and its history lessons of the government's role in the drug game in the 1980s is Amin Joseph. Welcome to The Black Report. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. How you doing? Everyone is excited about Snowfall's return tonight. And for all of our soulmates who have been asleep at the wheel, who are not familiar with this fantastic show, tell us about it. Well, it's a um, it's a crime drama in the in the traditional sense. I think this is the real procedural show because it actually shows you how to cook, how to distribute and how to destroy a, an entire nation with, a, uh, with an illegal drug. Um, the geopolitics of, of uh, that our country was involved in with the Santanistas and the Contras um, came as almost like chickens coming home to roost um, in the inner cities of Los Angeles and, and all the inner cities um, around this country. Okay. Well, now we just touched on a real life kingpin, Rafo Edmund III from the 80s, and Snowfall is based on the early 80s crack epi uh, epidemic in East LA, South Central, and in the CIA. How detrimental do you think the 80s drug rise was to black men in the inner cities during that time? I mean, I'll, I'll quote the um, the late great John Singleton, which this this show was um, was founded from his you know from his think tank. Mm -hmm. He said that in American history, there were three things that were totally detrimental to the African-American community. It was slavery, it was Jim Crow, and it was the crack epidemic. Um, he said that crack was the only, the crack epidemic was the only thing that would make a mother sell her own child throughout the history of our, of us being, you know, um, chattel slavery, everything that we've gone through as a people here in this country nothing would separate a mother from her child and crack was the thing that would do that wow that is that is very powerful because that story um is really um skillfully told um, when you watch Snowfall. Soulmates, if you're just joining us, we're talking to Amin Joseph, one of the stars from FX's series Snowfall. Now, I am an avid watcher of this show. I am obsessed with it. I tell everybody with ears, you need to watch it. It's You can catch up. It's only three seasons, but season four starts tonight. So season three ended with a real cliffhanger with everyone facing a very moral reckoning. What can we expect from Snowfall season four? I think season four, you can get what you expect. You can get that um, that more violence will ensue, that the geopolitical, uh, the political landscape of the CIA funding this war with the Contras and the Santanistas to to come to a head, and for people to be able to, uh, you know, for the government to be able to wash its hands of the uh, of, of the responsibility after putting this cheap drug. In, into these uh, inner city neighborhoods. And what, you know, what will ultimately happen is war. Uh, we'll, we'll see the rise of, of gangs come in as enforcers um, and take these communities that we spent time building after, you know, the great migrations out of the South coming into the, 
to the East Coast and to the West and to, to you know, Chicago, the Midwest. Um, but for Los Angeles in, in particular, we're watching this this community that people bought, that these were middle class communities that now have bars on their windows. Yeah. And now, you know, as a, a mother or father, you can't go outside without someone trying to knock you over the head or someone trying to break into your home for television. So I think we know that this is a tragic tale, that um, we know how this will end. This is a tragedy. Yeah, that is so true. Okay, so we got a lot of soulmates to watch so far. We know that. What can we expect from Jerome? Any teasers? Can you share anything <laughs> for this season? Give us something. I I think that um, I think that we've watched Jerome come from sort of a, a you know a small weed hustler to his his nephew putting him on to this cheap cocaine crack um, in the process of cooking it. In that process, like I said, you know we'll will land these entrepreneurs, you know, Jerome has tried to get out of the game and try to, you know, become an entrepreneur and like selling speakers and all type of small businesses that we've seen drug dealers in the past wash their money through. But I think that more importantly, it's, it's the, this is the family dynamic. I think John Singleton and the show creator spent a long time to show you the, the, the family dynamic of these characters to see that there is an ultimate price and are you willing to pay you know, are these uh, these means justifying the ends, you know, the ends justifying the means, you know. Um, so I, I think that you'll recognize that that Jerome Saint has a conscience. Um, and I think that all of those things will come to a head in this in this uh, particular season. Right. You just mentioned John Singleton, who was the brainchild of this show. What was it like working with him before his untimely de uh, death? I mean, working with John is, John is a godsend, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reason why we had a, a filmmaker that came from a community, made movies about that community, where able, was able to put people that look like me and you on the big screen and for us to be able to see um, ourselves and see the humanity mm. and different sides of the humanity, not just a stereotypical humanity, you know, um, but show the black father for what they were and someone like Furious, um, be able to show a young precocious teen like Franklin Saint. Um, let's think about Omar Epps character in Higher Learning. Mm -hmm. Think about um, working with John Singleton was like working with this, this artist that was full of enchantment, full of creativity and positivity and watching him almost like a Renaissance man, just paint, you know, on his canvas and being a part of that, being a collaborator with that is something that I'll always remember. Um, there's a circle of truth around my head to also speak truth to power, to uh, to go with my gut on things and, and, and to do unapologetic work, that unabashed so, work. That was so eloquent. Thank you so much for that. John Singleton definitely changed a lot of lives. Thank you so much. Snowfall returns tonight on FX and we hope to talk to you soon. I mean, Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Thanks so much. Bye. I see what you did there, Romeo. <laughs> I see what you did there.